This is 9.10 Taylor and McLaurin series, the form of a convergent power series theorem. So if F is represented by a power series like this, like the ones we've seen before, for all X in an open interval I containing C, then AN is of this form and F of X, of course, will be in this form. This is a way to ensure that the power series is convergent, okay? So the definition of a Taylor and McLaurin series, if a function f has derivatives of all orders at x equals c, then the series defined as this, and fn is not f to the power n, it's that number of derivative. So when n is 0, it's the original function. When n is 1, it's the first derivative. When n is equal to 2, it's the second derivative, so on and so forth. Um, is called the Taylor series for f at c. Now, if c is equal to 0, then the series is called the Maclaurin series for f. So for example 1, it says find the Taylor series centered at c for the function. And notice that c is equal to 0. So essentially, in reality, what you're finding is the Maclaurin series because the c equals 0. So let's go ahead and try to find this um, power series. Okay. So as we do this, we're going to need to have all of our derivatives. We need to have a few of them until we start noticing a pattern, okay? Once we see the pattern, then we can stop. So I typically like to go like four or five derivatives just to make sure. So if I do f of zero, I get e to the negative two times zero, which is just e to the zero or one. Now if I do f prime of zero, I'm going to need to know what f prime of x looks like. And that would be e to the negative 2x, chain rule applies, so times negative 2. And if I plug in 0 into that, I get negative 2 times e to the 0, or just negative 2. Then same thing for the second derivative. So the second derivative would be um, well, the derivative of this is, the derivative of this by itself is negative 2e to the negative 2x. And now I have to take the derivative of the exact same thing with the constant multiplier. So I'm essentially going to end up with this derivative times that constant multiplier that's already there. So I'm going to end up with positive 4e to the negative 2x. So here I get positive 4 e to the negative 2 times 0, which is 4 times e to the 0, which is 4. Now we're going to move on to the third derivative. So again, I already know I'm going to end up with the same derivative here for this times 4. So negative 8 e to the negative 2x. So I'm going to end up with negative 8. I can do the fourth derivative. I get, I'm going to get 16 positive e to the 0, which is 16. I could do the fifth. You start seeing the pattern negative 32, right? Um, so let's go ahead and try to write this in its form. So we are going to have all of these terms, right? So f of c all by itself, so 1 plus f prime of c, which was negative 2, x minus c, which is just 0, over 1 factorial, plus the next one. So f prime, f double prime, so 4, x minus c squared over 2 factorial. Then the next one, the third. So negative 8 times x minus c cubed over 3 factorial plus 16 over x to the fourth over 4 factorial so on and so forth right so um, what is going on here now notice this does not have anything under there you could put 0 factorial just to keep the same symbols in the denominator. So you can say, say that this is equal to n equal to 0 
And the denominator is obvious. It's just in factorial. So you plug in 0, you plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, plug in 4, so on and so forth, right? Now, and it's also obvious for the x. You just get x to the power n because x to the 0 is 1, x to the 1 is x, x to the 2 is x squared, x to the 3 x cubed, so on and so forth. The harder part is the part that goes in the front, okay? This is going to be the harder part. Now, notice that you have, um, it's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, which means you will have a negative 1 to the power n. So when n is 0, this is positive. When n is 1, it's negative. When n is 2, it's positive. When n is 3, it's negative, so on and so forth. Then you also know you have 2 to the power n. 2 to the power 0 is 1. 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 to the power 3 is, or I'm sorry, 2 to the power 2 is 4. 2 to the power 3 is 8. 2 to the power 4 is 16 and so on and so forth. So this is the power series that you end up with. Um, now they didn't ask us to find the convergence or anything like that, so we are done once we find this series, okay? So this is the series that they were asking us to find. Let me check my time. Okay, we can go ahead and go on to the next one. So this is the last example, and just like before, I want to do a few derivatives um, before we start trying to write the function. So we know the first, the original is sine, the first derivative is going to be cosine, the second derivative is going to be um, negative sine, third derivative is going to be negative cosine, fourth derivative is going to be negative negative sine which is sine x and then the fifth derivative you notice what's happened we've gone back all the way around right back to cosine of x back to sine and cosine so it's going to repeat every four so when we get here after that it's just a matter of repeating okay so f of pi over two because that's where i'm centered this time so I get sine of pi over 2, which is y value is 1. Then f prime of pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2, which is x value is 0. Double prime is going to be negative sine of pi over 2, which is negative 1. Triple prime is going to be negative cosine of pi over 2, which is still 0. And then fourth prime, we're back to 1. Fifth prime, right, we're back to 0, and so on. It's going to be negative 1, 0, so on and so forth, okay? So f to the 6, f to the 7th, so on and so forth, okay? So let's go ahead and write these out, and then we can come up with the series. So we get all of these values. So for the first one, 1 over um, 0 factorial, and you actually end up with x minus pi over 2 to the power 0, because we won't have anything there. Then plus 0 times x minus pi over 2 to the power 1 over 1 factorial, plus negative 1 x minus pi over 2 to the second over 2 factorial plus 0 pi over 2 oops x minus pi over 2 to the third plus and then it starts all over again right 1 x minus pi over 2 to the fourth over 4 factorial and it does keep going but notice that everyone that has an odd number, it's zero times all of that, which means this is ultimately just gonna go away. So if I wanted to, what I could do is just rewrite this as um, x minus pi over two to the zero over zero factorial plus x minus pi over two, that one I get have a negative one in front 
to the square, then the positive to the fourth, and then I'm gonna, it's gonna go right back around again. So negative one, x minus pi over two to the next even power, which is six, and so on and so forth, okay? And so the way you can write this as a series is, I do have to start at zero, but notice that when I plug in zero, I get zero. When I plug in one, I have to get two. When I plug in two, I have to get four. When I plug in three, I have to get six. So down here, it's actually gonna be two in factorial. So twice that, right? Um, so when I plug in zero, I get zero factorial, which is zero factorial. When I plug in one, I get two factorial. When I plug in two, I get four factorial. When I plug in three, I get six factorial, and so on and so forth. Now notice the numerators. You have one, negative one, one, negative one, so on and so forth. So it is a negative one to a certain exponent. It's going to be n. When n is zero, it's positive. When n is one, it's negative. When n is two, it's positive. When n is 3, it's negative, right? So on and so forth. Now I'm going to have x minus pi over 2. And the same thing as the denominator, right? You wanted it to be 0, 2, 4, 6 in the factorials. You also want it to be 0, 2, 4, 6 in the exponents. So that also has to be 2n. Now just some quick um, tidbits, right? If all you have is evens, the even factorials, or exponents, whichever way you're looking at it, okay? Then you're going to use 2n. If they're all odd, because that can happen, then you'll want to use 2n plus 1, okay? So that when you plug in 0, you get 1 for your first. So 1, 3, 5, 7, all of that sort of thing. Now the signs. If the signs toggle from positive first, then negative, then positive, then negative, you use negative 1 to the power n. However, if the signs start off negative and then toggle back and forth, you want to do negative 1 to the n plus 1. So that when you plug in zero, you get in negative one to the one, which is negative to begin with. And then here's some other ones that get a little bit weirder. If you have positive, then negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, that sort of thing. You need to use negative one to the n, n plus one, all over two. Okay. And then if they start off positive, and then negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, so on and so forth. Then you're gonna do negative one to the n, n minus one over two, being an exponent, okay? So just some quick little tidbits so that when you're doing this and you're putting this into the formula, but then you've gotta somehow put that into a series, these little tidbits will help with noticing the patterns and how to put them into a series, okay?